So in the last video, we went through um, a lot of the options in our character panel. So I'm going to open the character panel again. And again, if you don't see it, you can go to the window menu and find it under there. All right, so we went through font size. We went through letting, kerning, tracking, vertical scale, horizontal scale, baseline shift, and color. Now we're going to focus on the bottom portion of our character panel. All right, so I'm going to actually um, move back to a different document that doesn't have any formatting done to it so we can go through some of these options here. So this is character panel demo two, and the one we worked on yesterday was without a two. All right, so um, let's work with layer one. I'm going to double click to select the text and we're going to talk about these options down here. Now, some fonts have bold and italic, et cetera, here. Some fonts don't. So usually it's kind of one of the more decorative type of fonts. So let me just pick something here. Mm, let's see. Does this one have bold? Yes. Let's try something else. Let's try curls. All right. Curls, you see, doesn't have bold, italic, etc. So Photoshop has on the character panel some built in effects, and they're fake or faux. So we're going to start here on the far left, and let me commit the font change first. All right. Now I'm going to double click it. And again, there is no bold option. So we have this option here, which is Faux bold. F A U X is pronounced faux, means fake or imitation, false. And when I click it, watch the letters here, and you'll see they get a little bit bolder. Okay, so it's a fake way of doing so. Uh, we know there's no italics, that's what the next one does. So if I do this, you'll see a little bit of a slant to it. Okay, so that's what the first two icons are all about. I'm going to go ahead and commit that change and let's move on to layer two. Now, Moving along, right now you can see that I have used what's called sentence case. Sentence case basically, um, I'm sorry, it's not sentence case. It has got the first letter of each word capitalized. Okay, so I use the shift key to get the capital L, N, and L. And we can quickly change to all caps without retyping the word. Okay, so that's what this one does. Now this one is a little bit confusing for people. It's called small caps. In small caps, Kind of looks like all caps, right? But look at the first letter in each word, and you will see that first letter in each word is taller, okay? I didn't change font size. So small caps works like this. Only, let me cancel out, only if the word is typed with capital letters as the first letter in each word and then change to small caps will it take effect, okay? So I'm going to double click again. Remember, I originally typed it with a capital L. All right, I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to change this N in Nona to a lowercase so you can see what I mean here. Just because it's the first letter and I do small caps, it's going to leave it the same height. It does capitalize it, but it doesn't make it as tall as it was before because we started with a lowercase N. Okay, so again, that's what small caps will do for you. All right, moving on to the next one, we have um, superscript and subscript. Um, superscript um, is like an exponent, okay? Um, when you do, let's go to layer three. This is kind of silly here, but I'm just going to grab the I and I'm going to superscript it, okay? And it superscripts it. Now that looks kind of silly, right? but I'm just kind of showing you. It's not really, I know it kind of looks like a baseline shift, but let's really make a little bit more sense out of it. i um, actually gonna undo that. I didn't give you a piece of text, excuse me. I didn't give you a piece of text here to work with. So what I'm gonna have you do, I want you to change this text, just highlight it and just type um, three, two equals nine, okay? And commit the change. Hit the check mark. All right, we know that 32 doesn't equal 9, but 3 squared is 9. So let's go back in here. 
highlight just the two. So we have to select what we're going to superscript. And now we can do it sort of as an exponent. Okay. All right. And then obviously the next one we have is a subscript. So let's go to layer four, change the text. Let's do something like H2 and a zero for water. And then I had to think about it. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've taken chemistry. Um, so we're going to select just the two and we're going to subscript. And there we go. So superscript means higher. Subscript means lower. The easiest way to remember that if you get confused is think about Superman flies through the sky. So he's above the baseline. And then we have subscript. Think about a submarine being underwater. Um, and that will be lower than the baseline. So then the last two are pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have strike through and we have, I'm sorry, we have underline first. So uh, it doesn't matter which layer you pick. If you click on the underline, you get an underline. Okay. Um, and then if you do a strike through, which is the next one, you get, it's not the same thing as an underline. I'm going to actually do it on layer two here. Um, a strike through puts a line through the text. Okay. All right. Now. We have some other ones down here. These are not that common to use. Um, I'm actually just going to go over the last two here, which we have our ordinal number. Ordinal just means in order. So we know that we count one, two, three, but when we speak in terms of ordinal numbers, we're talking about first, second, and third, okay, being in like, say, for example, finishing order. All right, so I've given you some layers here inside a new uh, folder or under, under order ordinals and fractions. So let's expand that folder on our layers panel and let's do the ordinals first. Now I'm going to double click so I make sure that I'm on that layer and I'm going to just select first and I'm going to switch it to an ordinal number. And you can see it's sort of like a baseline shift or a superscript. Um, it only works with certain fonts. Okay, so I provided this in a font that I know would work. Okay, so if I go over here to second and I do an ordinal on it, it works. But if I change to some of these other fonts, you see, I'm going to get a preview here. So if I'm on uh, copper plate gothic, it does not raise it up. Okay, so there's only certain fonts that will um allow you to apply in an ordinal and Cambria is one of those um, and you can do the third if you want to it's not really that important fractions are down here and our fractions um, also are dependent upon a font okay so one slash two um, if I turn it into notice that they're all sitting on the same baseline and the one and the two are exactly the same size and sitting on the same baseline but when i select them and i turn on the fraction formatting you can see it converts it okay so this thing here is not 43 over 4 it's supposed to be four and three quarters so if i was trying to format this as four and three quarters i'd only highlight the three slash four and then turn on the fraction format and then it reads a little bit easier, four and three quarters, okay? So that's the gist of what you see in the character panel. There's some other things here. They're not very common to use. Um, the only other one we have that I wanna just introduce you to is what's called the anti-alias. And that has to do with the pixelation on the edge of some of the curved numbers, okay? Um, so if you zoom in on some of these and I can't see what layer, it's kind of, I probably don't have the right samples here for you, but let, let's just do ordinals and see what happens. So right here, it's telling you that the anti-alias, that is the smoothness of the letter. So if I switch this to smooth, see how it kind of cleans up the edges a little bit? That's what that option does. Okay, so you can go in here and you can mess around with it, but they're generally, most people don't change them. But if you do want to smooth out letters, you can find that in here. And then this last little drop down here, if you're trying to do some special characters from other languages, you can find them in here. But I'm going to advise you to 
stick with the English here, you can make a mess out of your um, document. All right, I'm gonna cancel out of that. I'm gonna hit Control Zero to zoom back out. And one last thing that I do wanna show you is once you start messing with all of these settings, there are often times when you need to get everything back. You can see here I made a mess out of this because I had the layer selected. So I'm gonna undo that. Um, I wanna show you how to reset your character panel. That means it's gonna take everything back to normal. And that is done by going to this little drop down menu on the character panel. And you will see an option here to reset the character panel. All that's gonna do is change it back to the default, Marriott Pro, et cetera. I had my ordinals layer selected when I did that. So I'm gonna, uh, there we go. I'm gonna undo that. If I'm on my background layer when I do it, it should not affect any of my text because I don't have a layer selected that has any content. Um, any other things in here? Um, you see some of the ones that are listed as icons here. And the only other one that I didn't go over is change text orientation and change text orientation. Let's try this one. And when you go here and you change text orientation, it changes it to vertical, okay? So you have that option in there as well. And it's kind of hanging off the edge so you can move it over if you want to. So that's the end of the character panel. Again, there's some other things I didn't cover, but those are the basics of how we can manipulate the appearance of text in Photoshop.